Hi everyone, this is Mingyao from Ozone Engineering and in this video I'll be looking at how we set up a piezoelectric actuator. In the past few years, ANSYS has really made doing piezoelectric analysis easy and I'm taking a real life example from Thor Labs. Uh, Thor Labs has a, a wide range of, range of piezoelectric actuators including amplified ones. And the nice thing about this is that you, that you are able to download the CAD model of these amplified piezo actuators. And we can put it into ANSYS to see how they work. So let's get on with it. And I'm going to, going to draw, drag and drop a step file of the piezoelectric actuator geometry. And we're going to use some of these couple field harmonic analysis, op, uh, analysis blocks for our simulation. The couple field elements built into Workbench now allows us to combine electric, mechanical, thermal, and acoustics solvers, so we have the ability to do full piezoelectric analysis. Even more conveniently, we have a wide range of piezoelectric materials already defined here. So we can use something like a lithium neobate, or we can do a PZT-8, PZT-4, etc. So I added a couple of piezoelectric materials, and now we can get it on go ahead and set up this simulation. Harmonic analysis means we're driving the piezo stack at a certain frequency and looking at the structural response due to that. Okay, here's the system. We have a casing here, which we don't need. I'm going to suppress this. We have a piezo stack. I've taken the liberty of removing the connecting wires. There used to be these wiggling wires connecting through it. And then we have the flexure that's, that will be actuated. I'm going to suppress this here as well. So we're going to move our way down here. So let's uh, go ahead and select all of these bodies. And I'm going to make the, these pieces uh, PZT-8. I'm going to hide it. And everything else right now is structural steel. And maybe I'll just leave it that way. We can always go to a particular part. Maybe we'll go to one of these parts. And now I can make it, a, say, a titanium type of material. And this has a huge library of materials available for selection. Uh, maybe I need to type out the entire word here. And it'll search for titanium alloy. So we have various grades of titanium alloy I'm going to pick one of them at random to, to set for this. Uh, one, it is important when we're looking at piezoelectric materials to assign the right orientation. So we, we want the PZT stack to be aligned, the Z axis of the PZT stack to be aligned along the X axis. So if we go and look at our material property here for PZT-8, you see that the first two X and Y are the same and Z is in a different different uh, orientation for both the elastic matrix as well as the primitivity matrix. So to do that, we define a coordinate system. Uh, right click, insert, let's put in a new coordinate system here. And we want to align the Z axis along the global X axis. So we're going to, again, select all of these PZT part, uh, components. We're going to go find them in the tree and assign a coordinate system to align it in the right direction. So that's all we have to do for that. Um, the meshing, we can do lots of uh, fancy meshing if we wanted to, but I'm going to skip that for the sake of this uh, analysis. And we're going to specify a frequency sweep. So I'm going to sweep from 900 to 1500 Hz. We'll do 100 solution intervals. We can do finer uh, or you can do user-defined methods as well. Automatically, ANSYS will take into account and use variation, variational technology to speed up the simulation if, need, if it can. And we're going to add maybe, uh, maybe a, a little bit of damping, a couple percentage of damping. Physics on the entire system will cover stru uh, structural and electric charge. Uh, now we just have to specify some boundary conditions. So this particular area will be held 
stationary so I'm going to select these two areas and assign let's say friction to support right. this will cause the entire system to be able to turn those maybe let's just do a f basic fixed support here and we want to specify the PZT stack so let's hide everything else Uh, there's a few ways to, we want to kind of alternating plus or minus across this PZT stack. If I click on a surface here, I have to pick surface. I can see they're all stacked up, but it can be a little bit difficult to figure out which surface is which. So what I tend to do is uh, I'll kind of hide every other one of these. I'll right click and hide bodies. Then I'll select these. And we'll add an uh, electric voltage here. Voltage of 75 volt. Right now it's millivolts, so let's do 75,000 millivolts. And then we'll do ground on the other side. It's a harmonic analysis, so the excitation will be in phase. We can always adjust the phase angle if needed. So that'll, that'll be ground. Uh, I'm going to show everything now. And we're going to now uh, kind of do the same thing we did last time here. We'll hide everything else. Uh, looking at my voltage here, I'm going to select all the comp all the blocks that I've already loaded, and then do the same thing. So uh, the, this one we can uh, let's go ahead here. We can add to it, so I'm going to add the same eight more, and then the ground. We'll add eight more. Now, while while you're doing your CAD work, if you want, you can specify these as well. So you can just then pick pick a name selection to do it. So that's all we need to do to set up the simulation. Go ahead and run this analysis. Okay, simulation, the simulation has completed. Let's take a look at a uh, frequency, frequency response. We want, this is a actuator, so we want to see, let's, let's say this surface, uh, we, we go for the maximum depth deformation in the global Z axis. Okay, so we have a uh, excitation here at uh, 1368 hertz we can take a look at the deformation at 1368 let's turn off the mesh here we can always refine the mesh to get oh this is a little too much let's uh so with uh, maybe it will exaggerate by a hundred times. See how that works. Okay, so that's that's the actuator moving. We can see all of the springs working properly to excite the actuator. And when we run this, you can see there's a maximum deflection of of about a hundred microns, 0 0.1 millimeter, based on this current uh, design here. We can also look at our electric voltage potential, and this will show you the oscillation. Uh, let's change this to 1368. Show the 75 volt deformation, and we can do plot a variety of other uh, results as needed. Uh, stress can be very important, so we also want the stress at 1368. And we can look at the maximum stress at zero phase, or we can say uh, at this particular frequency, but maximum over the phase. So now here we can see where the maximum stress is going to occur, right in that location. Depending on, you can see there's a fillet here to try to relieve the stress. 
and have you mass some stress right there. <coughs> is uh, probably a refined mesh will help us understand the actual maximum stress better. So that's a really quick example of how we set this up. You can take this a lot further. In essence, uh, almost every value you can see, for example, my driving voltage, my results, uh, frequency, uh, and maximum amplitude can all be parameterized whenever I see an empty box here. In addition, the material property and the geometry can be parametric. So here I can set up a modal and a couple here field harmonic analysis with a wide range of input parameters and output parameters. Uh, from these parameters I can do a response surface to look at the how different parameters interact, how the input parameters and output parameters are correlated. And this allows us to do a design optimization where I can specify for each parameter what the goals are and then have uh, have the computer run different design parameters to get the right uh, performance. So if I'm trying to achieve a specific resonant frequency, I can change the, the thickness and size of the springs, maybe how long they are, I can change the thickness and size of my flexure, and also anything about the material property itself. So lots of options available, but this is a quick example of how we can very quickly set up a piezoelectric resonator problem, piezoelectric actuator problem like the type developed by Thor Lab. So thank you very much for watching this video. If you li like this video, please like and subscribe to our channel. If you have any questions on how to do ANSYS simulations, for example, these piezoelectric devices, feel free to reach out to us at ozeninc.com. Thanks and have a great day.